Hello and welcome back. So we're talking about components again and we're talking about inputs. Now we covered this a bit when we're talking about just forms in general. When I'm thinking about creating just like components around inputs, there's so many different factors. What I have here is I have my general input, which is like the base style here. Let's go into it. We have my right icon. And within there, I have my icon that I can swap out with anything. I can hide this section if I need to. I have my content area over here and I have my text and icon little component section and my text is over here. And just like that, like if I decide to hide this, my text will just automatically left align. So I'll show you what that looks like after once we create more instances of things. And this is how I've set up my general input. Very simple and everything else is connected to that. I've also created a nice label. Let's jump right into what a label looks like. I have my left content and I have my right content. You'll notice these little icons and that is just to indicate I have an auto layout set up and that helps me create just like responsive, not entirely responsive, but responsive within this sense that if I were to delete something, the entire width wouldn't stay just like the width of optional, it would shrink down to the label width. So I have my left content, which is made up of my label copy and my optional indicator. And then on my right, I have like a little description and I have an icon if I need it. And same thing, it is set up in the auto layout, which will help me a lot. So that is how I set up labels. I have a word counter if we need that in the future, which is just a simple like text that I've used. See, I've used my style here. If we wanted to, we could maybe bring that up into like a 12 pixel style, but I've left it at 10 and I have a field message. So if there is an error, if there's a success, same thing, I have my icon which is always going to be accompanied by a text. And I've set it to a certain width that I know on mobile that I'm designing for. Now, there are gonna be instances where you can't always do this. We are afforded that luxury because we are just working with mobile. But remember, auto layout just isn't there yet. And I would be using that a whole lot more for things that I can like expand in terms of the width and height and have the elements still stay within that auto layout properly. Right now, they just don't do that entirely. They don't work that way. But this is really great for what we need it for now. Now let's get into our variations of our base. So I've done a couple different things here. The first section, I've just done inputs. You know, there will be times where you just need an input and no label. Sometimes you may just need an input with a placeholder. You know, you see them on sign up screens and I think that's totally fine. You know, I think that's one instance where you can just use a placeholder because it's just so standard. You have your email and then your password or something very simple like that. So I've done things like placeholder unselected. I have it with a placeholder disabled with an error. Same thing over here. I have just empty states. I have empty and selected, empty disabled, empty unselected with an error, empty error selected. As you can tell with inputs and forms in general, they are so complex. I mean, just look at all the different variations that we have to design for. That's not to say that we are going to use these, all these variations to like show every single use case within a form when we're designing and presenting. But this is like what I'm saying around design systems are for everyone. We need to show developers what we're thinking in terms of like different use cases and what those use cases look like. So we have a filled version and a filled selected. We have a filled disabled, error unselected, filled error selected. And in this case, you can only see a success message when it is filled and filled and selected. You'll notice when it's filled and selected, we get a little bit of a thicker outline. We get our carrot that's blinking in there. And now we'll see actual form fields. So with labels included, we have our label. And what I've done here, you'll notice that it's just a label. Everything else is hidden just by default. I found that that was just better. And in the future, in most cases, this is how our label will be displayed. But if we have like, I'll show you an example in a second, but 
basically it's a duplicate of this, but with a label included with a message text at the bottom included if we need like successor error messages. You'll even see I swapped out the icons for something that is much more fitting for like an error or a success message. So let's get into how we can use just one of these assets, these components. So I'm just gonna actually show you how I would use it from the asset section if I were using it within a project. I'm gonna go into here. I can even search for it if I want to. I can just search input and I can see all my types of inputs that I've created, which is a lot. I can also just go into the input section. Say I'm trying to create a form field and I am going to see all these different instances. And you know, maybe this is a lot and you know, you don't want to see all these and you want to break it out further and break it out into different frames. You can do that too. I may actually do that at one point. So if I bring my form field, this is my filled unselected. I'll see that my form field filled unselected. And I don't need to do anything here. What I'm going to do is I'm not even gonna rename it or anything. I'm not even gonna create a new component. Like when you are using it within your designs, when we're using them, we don't have to like recreate components every time you use them or you change them. They're there for you to just kind of tweak if you need. You can use them as is. So if I were to call this one birth date, so I have my birth date. And here I can start, you know, turning things off that I don't need. So I'm just gonna do that. I'm just gonna do that. And there you go. What I can also do is I can turn on my right content. I can take that icon off. And, and I can change that variation to like text gray like that. I can even make this one a little bit lighter. I think this one's already set to text gray 80. So there you go. Like you can just continue to create like a form like that if you need to. You'll also notice like the same thing applies. If I were to go here and you know, tighten up that radius a bit, maybe make it only five pixels. That's gonna just be changed everywhere else. It's reflected in all my designs, even my instances of the components that house that original input. So if we look over here, I have that base input right there and it's going to be reflected there. So that is how I would use them if I like say I had um, credit card information like a CVV. We have a way to toggle an icon and in that icon, we can go in here and let's uh, change that instance. We could have different types of icons. I think this one actually suits what you would use for your CVV. So say if that was like my code and we can like shrink down that text, what you could do is you have to make sure that your field unselected is able to actually shrink properly. So that is how you would create different types of inputs very easily with all the different variation you need. That includes things like different types of icons. So if I wanted to go ahead and create like a, a search bar right here, I have my search and I can use it any which way I want. So that's an empty search and that is how I would use it. So, you know, use all these different assets in a way that is going to help you. But remember to create these different variations for your development team, for your whole team to understand all those different use cases. Why would we see an error? Why would we see like a selected state? Why is there a disabled state? You know, you need to ask those questions. Remember to go through your user flows and think about all those different cases. And that is how we create components for inputs.